video I have referred to a few times throughout the training so far. So it's good to finally get here and see what we can do with our weapons and our implements. This is the arsenal video. And here is the section of the player's guide which deals with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now what we want to do is actually go to Vanny and see what we can do with Arsenal. So let's hover over and see what the tooltip says. We can edit our weapons to start off with. So why don't we do that? So edit current main weapon in your main hand. So this will bring up a form for whatever you have in your main hand, which happens to be that staff, which we configured. Now, again, we get the uh, blacksmith <laughs> pounding away in the background to indicate that we are changing our weapon features. Now, there's usually a proficiency bonus here. If it's not picked up, then we can actually put it in there. You should know the proficiency bonus of your weapon. And if you have a feat, he's first level, so it'll usually just be one. If he has expertise, I believe it is, or uh, because focus is for damage. And uh, the range is one. That's correct. A reach bonus. This is if you have a reach bonus. Actually, one of my players now was saying, hey, dude, um, I'm trying to hit a target two squares away, and it's saying no targets within range. So I said, oh, well, your reach bonus is probably not set. So that's that's very rarely used, but, you know, if you have a glaive or something, then, yeah, or a halberd, then that's what you use there. You can put both of these numbers up to two. It's probably better because sometimes the reach bonus applies sometimes it doesn't so it's better to split them apart into one each across those fields and of course your mhw damage goes there uh actually i don't think it's a d4 for a staff i think it's a d6 it doesn't matter you'll know what what your correct d is for that and let's say it's uh, non-magical otherwise zero across those two values there uh, MH other damage is if you have some damage which applies all the time, every time you hit, might be good to put it in there if it's not addressed in your macro. So we'll say okay there. Then it asks if it's a high crit weapon. I don't believe staves are. So we'll say cancel there. Single handed weapon? No. It's held in two hands, I believe. So we will say no, it's not a single handed weapon and say cancel there and we get some output there on what we actually set in that form. If we hover over the token for Vanny, we see in the lower left in the pop-up staff sheet, main hand and off hand are both set to staff. So what's happening there is it considers it one weapon. It doesn't think you have a staff in one hand and a staff in the other hand. It's one weapon. So when you hit with that, you will get a versatile bonus of one. Now, it doesn't know which weapons are versatile and which are not. That is a manual thing you have to do as a player. If it's not, then you have to zero out that versatile field when you are being asked for damage. So that's that's one of the manual aspects, I'm afraid, of the framework because there's too many weapons to decide whether it's versatile or not. So I've decided to err on the side of caution and say, okay, give me the versatile bonus of one if it's not valid then you know just zero it out no problem so go to the next macro this is brand new edit current off weapon i just wrote this for service level 471 and that's the same thing it brings up the same form but for your other hand which is useless in this case because as we've just finished explaining that's the staff because it's a two-handed weapon but that's handy if you want to do that Edit implement. Now you remember earlier in the encounter videos where I said, oops, I forgot to give Vanny an implement, which he should have as a sorcerer. Now we can't we can actually run this right now and it'll give us a blank form into which we can put all our implement parameters, all the different numbers that make up the implement. But let's do something fun with that instead. We'll save that for later. Uh, equip implement same idea in order to equip one we have to have one and we don't right now equip weapon we do have a weapon which we already have equipped and but if we had another weapon which we wanted to use instead of the staff we can uh, equip that let's say we're going to the main hand you can actually 
equip an improvised or arranged improvised if you wanted to or if you put your weapons down then you want to do an unarmed strike we can actually do that as well but we will leave it as is he wants to keep his stuff now here's what i wanted to get to import magic item let's say he finds an implement and wants to use it this is really the best way to get an implement is to import it as a magic item you don't have to like i said you can go back to edit implement for a non-magical implement and then put in its numbers but most of the time when you're creating a new character unless it's first level you're going to choose an implement as one of your three free items that you can take at least that's what i do anyway so let's run that okay then it's saying enter item text from the compendium which is really your first choice you really should do that or the player's handbook chapter seven let's do the latter let's see how uh, flexible the framework is this mac macro is in handling that so what do we have here in the player's handbook uh, let's try this staff of the war mage so you select that highlight the text copy and just paste it into this field here okay then it asks us okay well what level is this thing these are the different options that we have in the description for that item uh, we'll go for the first one level three because it's first level and this time it does populate the name field properly uh, let's say we have a feat of one because we have implement expertise and uh, actually I don't think he has implement expertise but let's just again we're not we're just having some fun here we're not uh, actually doing a serious character you will be when you do yours but right now we're just illustrating what you can do here and look at this it's smart enough to know that there is a one enhancement bonus if we check the third option there it would give us a three and three d8 but right now that looks good and we'll, and if there is other damage that goes along with every implement strike that you make then that will be put in there say okay and yes it automatically runs the equip macro because it sees that hey you got a new implement do you want to equip it or do you want to just leave it unarmed that slot so of course we want to equip it so we'll say okay there and look at this it has found the power if we go back we see there's a daily power associated with that let's check that out make sure that it has gotten that correct and uh, we've got some flavor text there looks like and uh, an effect and uh, yeah that looks good use this power when blah 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 increase your blast or burst uh, actually that's not mm, gotta confess that's not supported by the framework if you have a close blast three then you have a close blast three it's not going to know whether you have an increase of one so how would you do that um if there's some excluded tokens because that close blast three is not big enough if a token is four squares away you know what before you run this macro before you run the associated attack doing that close blast three just bring that guy one square in so it gets included in that blast and after the attack is finished if he's still alive move him back to his original spot simple again if it's not if the framework doesn't address something just do it manually which is part of the mantra of using a framework i guess uh and yeah this looks good it's an item usage is daily it's a free action yeah that looks good we'll say okay and it'll put that on our library token that macro wrote staff of the war mage power to the free no group always know where your macros are being saved and again you can go over your buttons to see the tooltips to see where it has gone let's actually test that out right now it says it went to free no did it um okay it hasn't been refreshed yet again that's what the start turn macro does but of course it is there at the very end 
Looks good. Cancel. What else can we do with Arsenal? We'll go back. Hover. Uh, import mundane weapon. And this is more to do... Let's see. Uh, we are at chapter 7. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to... I believe it's the very beginning. Yeah, here we go. Here's all the weapons we have. You can also go to the compendium and get it from there, which is the more detailed description. That's usually done when you are equipping your character builder file. It's actually done better there. You should do it at that point, and it'll do it for you, uh, as it sort of did when we were importing Vanny. And uh, I don't know. Let's say... He needs a ranged weapon, and he wants this hand axe here. See this? The macro only recognizes the first four fields, so that's all we're going to copy. Copy text. Do, do, do. Arsenal. Import mundane weapon. Once again, it asks for the text. We simply paste it in here. Okay, look at that, fills out the name, fills out the proficiency. It already knew that we had a feat bonus, so it's brought that in. Look at this, two different ranges. If you target a creature that's six squares away, then you will get a long range penalty of minus two. And of course you won't be able to target creatures that are 11 squares away with this configuration right here and um yep that looks good mhw 1d6 it brought in the damage nicely looks good we'll say no but this is a single-handed weapon yes and um yeah oh by the way look at uh, the key focus there Staff of the War Mage is indeed equipped. And in your main hand, you have Hand Axe because you just imported it. So the macro is going to assume if you're importing it, I guess you're actually equipping it too. But now we have a problem with the offhand that's not supposed to be Staff because that's only half a weapon right there. So we can correct that by going Arsenal, Equip Weapon, okay. Offhand is now Unarmed. So we'll say OK there. And indeed, we have a hand axe in our main hand, and the off hand is unarmed. So everything's good. Remove weapon or implement. Let's say we really like our new hand axe. Eh, we don't need that old staff anymore. We can get rid of it. So what we can do is go to remove weapon or implement. OK. Remove weapon. We don't want the staff anymore. Say OK. And it removes the staff. And that's about it because the last one, uh, weapon to implement, we already saw that in an earlier video. Again, if you're running a sword mage where they can use their weapon as their implement, that's what you want to run. And you can convert an existing weapon to an implement configuration and then go to edit implement to edit that if you so wish and now you are a pro at handling your weapons and implements hope you enjoyed that thanks for watching